Welcome to another episode of Dealing TV q and I'm Mike and I'm here with Joe and we're here to take your questions and uh, answer them. So Ooh. we have a, a web form at dealingtv.com that you can go ahead and fill out your own question and we'll answer it right here. You betcha. So let's jump right into the questions. Uh, Everett from Sheridan, Arkansas wants to know when a five or eight port switch is connected to a router, will all of the connected computers be able to access the internet? And then a follow-up question, can you also plug a computer directly into the router along with the switch for greater computer capacity on the, on the switch? Well, the good news is, yes, you yes. can plug switches into your router to expand. So essentially, if you're multiplying the ports, as long as you keep plugging in switches, you can keep plugging computers or printers or whatever you need to. So yes, you can plug in to expand. Absolutely. So th that's one of the good things. It's kind of like uh, USB. You can just keep stringing more and more switches off of it. I think USB is 127 devices, and this is like some really high number that right. I'm not sure it was like 65,000, right? One of those. Well, things. not quite that high, but you, that you high. do have to worry about distance. But most home users don't exceed the the limit, so you won't right. have to worry about that. And even a small business isn't going to worry about it. And no. Once you get into the the higher end, 48 port switches and stuff, your IS department will take care of it. There you go. Okay, so uh, Michael in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania says he has a PC with Windows XP on it and just added a second PC with Windows Vista and he wants to go wireless. And he wants to know if D-Link has a wireless router that's compatible with XP that's connected to his DSL and a PC with 811G with Vista. Well, it doesn't depend on the operating system. So you can go ahead and plug in your router to an XP system or a Vista system and configure it, and it will work in either case. Right. So the the uh, router is is completely independent of whatever OS you're running. So you can have uh, Linux connected to it. You can have a Macintosh connected to it, and also you know all the other media players and different things like that. It, it's really OS independent. That's right. Okay. So uh, Winona in Searcy, California, says her DSL provider sold her a two-wire modem and wants to know if it'll work with her D-Link WBR1310 router. Aha. Aha. So, now here's the thing. Two-wire, uh, uh, they're pretty big units. The reason being is because they are all-in-one devices. They have modems, routers, wireless, you know, everything built into all-in-one. So, what you need to do is you're going to need to shut off the routing function of the two-wire device so that you can use your, your D-Link router. Okay. Yeah, that's that's the the two wire all in one encompassing okay. device. It's a and then after that, I suppose she'll need to know what type of PPPoE settings and such, and then configure the router with those settings to take over that right. function. Yes. Okay. So what I would do is I would call up your DSL provider and I would ask them for um, what uh, can how to get into the router or the two wire device so that you can shut off the router function. And, and they'll they'll walk you through that and get the settings from them too. Yeah. So Mike from Ottawa, Kansas, uh, wants to know: Can he connect an eight-port switch to the DIR six fifteen router and use the switch ports for the PCs and the router ports for a network attached storage device? This kind of is like this the is other like a question. follow up to the other question, yeah. but it's a little more specific. the The interesting thing is, as you cascade more switches, it doesn't really matter what you plug in. Mm -hmm. Because if you're plugging it right into the router or to a switch, it's just like it's one big switch. Yeah. So plug them in wherever it's convenient. That's really what kind of like out Legos. Right. It just keeps building sure. and building yeah. until you have hundreds and thousands of ports. There's really no issues about priority because they all get equal treatment for the most part. And if you have computers that spend a lot of time talking to each other rather than to the internet, you might want to put those on one switch because the switch functions will make port to port traffic very fast Faster, and yeah. transparent to the other devices attached to the other ports. So port-to-port -port traffic does not broadcast to the other devices. There you go. There you go. Absolutely. Uh, and then it's also taking uh, uh, away cycles that the router CPU would have to be grinding away. The switch Correct. can handle that all on its own. 
Okay, so Kathy from Koppel, Texas, wants to know how to change the password for a router if she can't remember it. In other words, resetting it to factory default. So uh, let's see, your password <laughs> is... No, we don't have ESP, can't guess but we do have an answer. Right on the back of all of D-Link routers, right next to where the power plugs in, you're going to see a little hole. It's too small for me to see here, but there's a little tiny hole. We can probably get a picture of it. Um, that says it may not be labeled as reset, but that is the reset switch. So if you just take something small, like a paper clip or something like that, you can just stick it in there. You hold it in there for like five seconds. It'll completely re uh, you know, reset it to factory defaults, and then you can go back in and reset it using the wizards. Right. Um, so one thing that, that we suggest, if you're in a home environment, uh, go ahead and, and, and write down your, your you know, password and username and your SSID and your uh, you know, passphrase key for your encryption and stuff right on the bottom of the router. Because if somebody can get into your house and they can get at that sticker, you have a whole different problem and wireless security is not it. Right. And it'd be security on your house. <laughs> and if you're going to want to reset your router, you're going to want to set it back. So what you might want to do before you get too far into the thing is make sure you've saved your settings to the setting file. And then when you restore your modem, you can restore those settings just by clicking a few buttons, not have to try and remember what all the settings were. Right. And the other thing is, is since you're resetting it to factory default, go ahead and check and see if there's some new firmware. And you can update the firmware at the same time. Good idea. You know? Get the latest features. Yeah, get it out of the way. So, um, okay, so we got one more question. Robert in Martinsburg, West Virginia, wants to know if, uh, if D-Link has a product that would allow three computers to be hardwired to one printer. So hmm. he has three hardwired computers and one printer uh, in a job shack at a construction site is what he was saying. Okay. Um, so all I would do is I would just get a, a wired router. That's going to make it easy for setting up the computers to talk to one another. Right. And then you could get a, a print server. So depending on the type of printer that you have, if it's USB or parallel, right. you know, just get a matching print server. D-Link makes a whole line of print servers. Um, and then just get one that will match with your printer. Then you plug that into the router, and now you're completely hardwired between right. the three computers and the printer. So this uh, printer uh, adapter will convert your printer to a network shared printer. And the nice thing about that is, because it's not connected through another computer, your computers can all go to sleep or be turned off, and as long as that printer is connected to the network, any other computer on that network can access that printer. So it's very easy and it's always accessible. And even if somebody brings a, a laptop in, they sure. could just hardwire the laptop right into the router, now they can use the printer. So if your guest well. wants to print, he's got a printer available. So print server, very convenient, especially for you know small business and, and, and things along those lines, and even at, for home businesses. Sure. Um, okay, well that's gonna do it for our questions for uh, this episode of D-Link TV Q&A. Um, we, if, don't forget, if you have a question, point your browser to www.dlinktv.com and fill out the little web form there, and we'd be happy to answer your question here. So thanks for watching, and we will see you on the next episode. Take care.